Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jamie Lenman. Uh, this is uh, a song I've written. I put it on the soft side of my new uh, double record. Uh, it's called I Ain't Your Boy. I see the pictures on the wall The time, the place, I don't recall I can't swear I was there at all Or if I'm here now I hear the way you talk to me It's like you're asking silently To make it like it used to be But I just don't know how Cause I And I sleep with his wife I know all of his friends I inhabit his life I watch him on the videos The shaggy hair, the funny clothes The naked lift beneath the nose A muscle memory You wonder only where he is And why he I try to tell you through the tears I haven't seen a kid for years And I, I ain't your boy I ain't your boy I ain't your boy No, I, I ain't your Hello and welcome back to Alex Hines Presents, where this week in the studio we have Jamie Lenman. How Hello you doing, there. mate? How you doing, mate? I'm good, yeah. I'm glad to hear it. Um, originally, you were the singer from the now X band Ruben, who are known for their heavy and uh, heavy riffs and melodies, um, but you're now doing some uh, solo material. Does this reflect in your solo, in your solo style? Uh, w- does what reflect? Do the um, heavy riffs and melodies from Ruben? Um, do they feed into your style of play in terms of being a acoustic artist? Yes, well, absolutely. I mean, uh, I mean, the, the sort of the way that those songs came out when I was in Ruben, you know, a bit of heavy and then a bit of melody all in the same song. That is, and that's how I write naturally. But uh, for this first record back, um, I thought instead of just doing another record that sounded like the old stuff, well, there's nothing wrong with the old stuff. I like the old stuff. But I thought it'd be good if we split it down the middle, you know, and, and uh, sort of presented it differently, if you like. So that's why I've ended up with a double album that's 
one half the heavy bits and one half the soft bits. In terms of writing, like uh, writing two, pretty much two albums uh, for the same release, how long did that take? Because it must have taken a good while to get everything sorted. Well, it did, yeah. I mean, uh, after I finished with Ruben, I didn't do anything musically for about a year. And then when I decided I was going to write uh, or at least finish some of the songs I already had, um, I suppose I spent six months on material that was very similar to those records and about six months in I realised I'd like to do this thing where it separates out so it then took me another 18 months I suppose you could say to to finish off the rest of the track so all in all about two years to write the whole thing really yeah if you include the period <laughs> that, I, that I wrote stuff that didn't go on it so I've ended up with you know another collection of songs that will go on something else at some point yeah so it's just kind of letting your creative juice flowing and you've got these two albums that contrast so differently absolutely yeah but i hope they complement as well as contrast um the album is called muscle memory which influences um, did you use for the album and in terms of fan reaction what kind of reaction have you had well um in terms of influences uh you know the heavy music i was listening to it just got heavier and heavier and heavier until it got almost unbearable (laughs) uh there are some bands that i listen to i can only listen to like five minute bursts so nostromo they're incredibly heavy and shining, uh, just amazing, and they just will split your mind in two. But then on the, the lighter side of things, I, I ended up getting quite heavily into uh, banjo music and bluegrass and a lot of pre-war jazz, oh, yeah. which I never thought, you know, had never appealed to me before. But suddenly a couple of years ago, it hit me like a lightning bolt, really. <laughs> Funnily enough, from hearing Steve Martin, the, the famous actor Steve Martin, a, a lot of people don't know that he actually, his first love is uh, banjo playing, and he's a really mean banjo player. And I heard him play and I thought wow so I got really heavy into um, Americana and early 20th century jazz oh, okay yeah that's kind of a complete contrast to what you're normally used to and what your fans are normally used to in terms of what you perform yes You've I suppose so Bluegrass in there um, and also in in terms of fan reaction have you had any for the album yes um, I mean you did ask that and I completely ignored you so I apologize <laughs> the fan right. reaction has been it's been sort of what I expected because you know, the people that are tuning in to listen to this record are people that were fans of Ruben. And I think Ruben was uh, sufficiently diverse to provide a good springboard to listen to lots of different types of music. Obviously, we never went quite as far as bluegrass and thrash, but we sort of, you know, we went near it. We had a couple of acoustic ones, a couple of faux ones, folky ones, and a couple of pretty heavy ones. So I think it's a natural progression, not only as an artist from this side of the fence, but also as a listener. Yeah. And... Uh, Obviously, everyone listens to loads of stuff. But I think if you listen to Ruben, you'll be sort of prepared for what I'm doing now. And the reaction has just been great. Everyone's sort of um, welcomed it with open ears, so to speak. And, and, you know, not just the fans, the critics as well. Uh, All the reviews have been very generous and very accepting of the new... Not really a new direction, but, you know, it's quite a bold statement. And uh, people have accepted that. And I'm very grateful for their patience. Awesome. So just kind of um, people... Do you think people were expecting more of what you're doing before? Or were they expecting something completely different? Well, this is the thing. I don't think they were expecting anything because I didn't tell anyone I was doing it. And even though I had been working on it, you know, for about for up to four years now, um, I didn't want to tell anyone, hey, I'm going to release a record in four years' time. Because, <laughs> because if I did that, you know, people would start to expect things and people yeah. would start to make up their minds about what perhaps they would like to hear or what they wouldn't like to hear. And so I very deliberately left it till the last possible minute to tell anyone. And that way, I don't think anyone has really had any expectations. And I think that's worked well because people have accepted it so wholeheartedly. And I think that that might have been a different story if I had told people it was coming way in advance. Uh, So in terms of that, people are more kind of or less kind of expecting something and kind of it's just kind of there. It's impulsive. It's going to hit them sort of thing. Yeah, there's no time to think. Yeah, it's just there. Deal with it. Pretty much just like that statement. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, you are also going on a UK tour in yeah. December. Uh, where are you going? And also, um, for those of you who are looking to play your London gig, you've sold out at the garage already. Have uh, we? You have indeed. Well, I knew that we were very close to it, but uh, it's good news to hear that we're sold out. So that's that's good. But that's maybe why we put another show in. We were doing the ninth at the garage, and then the tickets went so well, my agent said, let's do another one and I said okay you know I I generally do what my agent said (laughs) and so we booked the 10th as well so now uh, if indeed it is sold out that's great then you can you can still book tickets for the 10th and we're doing we're only doing about a week of shows 
Um, and with what are we doing? We're doing Manchester and Birmingham and Brighton and Glasgow and somewhere else, Bristol. Yeah. Do yes. You, do you have dates for these? Yes, gigs? we're going to start on the on the fourth. I think it is the fourth of December, uh, and then we go right up to the tenth. So the fourth is the first day in Brighton, unless I'm mistaken. And then the others are in there somewhere, and then we come right back down to London on the 9th and the 10th. So you can still get tickets for that 10th th- show. Um, be nice to see you there. <laughs> I'll be there. Sure. Um, also, in terms of where people can buy tickets, um, what link, uh, what websites are currently selling them? Uh, C-Tickets, I think. C-Tickets.co.uk has got them, and uh, TicketWeb has always got them. Um, I think those are the main two. Okay. Yeah. Um, but also in terms of that would people be able to get it on your website and your Facebook and all that kind of stuff oh yeah if you go to the Facebook if you just type in my name Jamie Lemon on the Facebook um, or even jamielemon.com that will take you there and then we have the links to the tickets there so that's the easiest way to do it instead of remembering those things just remember one name Jamie Lemon type it in Goggle and there you are in next go- thing you know you'll be rocking out at the garage <laughs> in Goggle in Goggle yeah <laughs> Um, but what would you say has been the craziest moment that you have experienced, either as a solo artist or in Ruben? The craziest moment, I will tell you, it is when we did a gig at the Forum, which is just up the road in Kentish Town. Yeah. And before then, I went to the market, Camden Market, just to, to get a donut or something. <laughs> and as I was biting into that donut, yeah. I saw across from me, above that big pub, which is next to the bridge, you know the bridge that says Camden Lock and it's got the painting of the guys oh, painting yeah. it? There was a picture of me, like 10 feet tall, <laughs> on the wall of, bigger than that, on the wall of the pub. And I was like, what? And it said <laughs> Ruben next to it. And I had the other guys in it as well, but I was I was in the foreground, I remember. And, th- and there were some other bands up. There was Sting and the Police, and there was the Libertines. And they'd put up this huge canvas mural of just some bands. I think it was just bands they liked, this pub liked. And we were up there, and it was totally nuts it was absolutely nuts <laughs> and i, I called imagine. the guys and i was like you've got to get to camden market and they're like we don't care what bargains you found and i was like <laughs> seriously come to camden market and we all looked at it and went wow and then it went down a couple of weeks later it came oh. down so for a so for a week or two weeks i was the king and you know what's funny is because when i was younger when i was very young i'd come to camden on a shopping trip and i wasn't aware of the ways of the world and i went into that pub yeah just to use the the toilet but because i was you know i didn't know how to really go to pubs and that i just sort of snuck in and, and the landlord quite rightly said you know can't use the toilet unless you buy a pipe mate and i didn't have any money <laughs> so i had to go out and i wish i had said on the way out one day my face is going to be on the outside of this pub because <laughs> it would have been true but i obviously i didn't know the future yeah so course. there you go but in terms of did you go into the pub and say you've got us on your wall why, why didn't you tell us about this we want we could have advertised this well thing. yeah i i think we had to get back for sound check before we could go that far i was sort of afraid of breaking the spell i thought if i pointed it out to someone in there they might go oh, and take it down because it had <laughs> been maybe commander graffitied overnight i yeah. think we later found out as with most of these things that there was just someone in the industry or you know in the pub in the organization who happened to be a, a fan of the band and it just sort of snuck us in there you know someone had said put some pictures of some great bands up there and obviously like the jam and the police they count and then whoever it was just snuck in Ruben and no one noticed and you think <laughs> great and if we if we counted as much to that guy as the jam and the police and and the Beatles and whatnot then that's good enough for me yeah I mean to be up there those great names absolutely even to be on the wall of a pub is pretty awesome absolutely yeah and if you could have any superpower which one would you have and why uh the ability to find things that have been lost I don't know if that's a superpower <laughs> But I remember when I was younger, I had a, um, a, a pair of them trainers that lit up when you walked. They had little oh, lights yeah, in them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. them. They weren't quite LA lights. They were the <laughs> cheap version from Blackbush Market. But I had a pair of them, and I loved them. And they went missing after about a week. And I was just like, God damn it, where have they gone? So <laughs> I wish I could find things that are lost. I think that would be good. So you are lost property man. Lost property man, yeah. <laughs> Deal. I like that. But uh, Jamie and Massey, thank you for coming down. You're very welcome. Um, uh, it's been a massive pleasure having you in the studio. Great. Uh, you've still got another song to play for us. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, so I'm going to let you do that. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. All right, this is my last song. Uh, this is a cover of a song by a band called Madness. This is called Embarrassment. This is one of their uh, more serious songs. Very. I've always thought it was a very sad song. So this is called This Is Embarrassment. Received a letter just the other day. Don't seem to want to know you no more 
I've laid it down, giving you the score. But then the first two lines are bluntly read. You're not to come see us no more. Keep away from our door. Don't come round here no more. What on earth did you do that for? Our aunt, she don't wanna know. She says, What will the neighbors think? They'll think we don't, that's what they'll think. They think, but I will, cause I know they think they don't. Our uncle, he don't wanna know. He says, We are disgrace to the human race. He says, How can you show your face when you're a disgrace to the human race? It's an embarrassment, a living endorsement The intention that you have booked Was an intention that was overlooked They say, stay away I don't want you home today Keep away from our door What on earth did you do that for? And our dad, he don't want to know He says, this is a serious matter Too late to reconsider No one's gonna want to know you And she don't wanna know She says, I'm feeling twice as old She said, I thought she had her head on her shoulders Cause I'm feeling twice as older I'm feeling twice as older Embarrassment.